So today we're going to install the Indian Scout Bobber 20 fairing with the uh, seven inch windshield. So as you can see, I've got a microfiber towel laid across the gas tank to protect the paint. My shipment came in three boxes uh, directly to Indian Motorcycles of Oklahoma City. So in this big box obviously was the fairing um, and a couple of other small doodads. There was a, uh, a hardware kit with all the nuts and bolts and not a whole lot to it, it looks like. So here's the back side of the fairing and the cool thing is they went ahead and installed all of the bracketry before they even shipped it. So I don't have to do that. It requires Loctite and a bunch of other stuff with uh, sp specific torque settings uh, and the like. So uh, that's gonna be a real time saver. There are instructions included that show how to attach this properly, but the um, I'm just glad that they did it so I don't have to. As you can see, I've kind of got a little bit of an organized mess here in the garage on the bench. So, uh, box number two was the the extra windshield that I ordered. I didn't want the little tiny one. I, I knew I would want a little bit taller one. So we're going to try the the tallest one that they had stock. So we're, we'll put that on and see how that works. Uh, in the other box, this square box right there, it had the. Uh, the new headlight relocation new bucket and so forth so anyway and the, oh they have a, a good set of directions and instructions so i did an inventory of all the parts everything was there down to the last washer so we're going to uh, start the installation step number one was as i expected to uh, remove the headlight nacelle there are six bolts from the back side there's three on each side you can see two right there and there's another one uh, back into the left a little bit so there's basically three they're in a triangle and uh, so those all need to be removed so that's it step number one those screws use a hex number six so that's what I'm going to use. I like to use these little socket ones that uh, I can put on the end of a ratchet. Sometimes I use a little extension for clearance, but uh, I, I really love using these. So let's get those removed. So before I start wrenching on this thing, I wanted to make sure, and the directions clearly spell this out, make sure your bike is parked on a flat and level surface. Make sure the kickstand is fully extended. Also, you want to make sure the ignition is off and remove the key from the ignition. Now, you'll notice I've got the, the bars turned all the way to the left, and that's going to be for better access. Uh, and I'll do the same thing. I'll turn the bars to the right when it's time to do the other side. You'll also notice I put another uh, microfiber towel, laid it across the fender for protection. Okay, so you'll see I've got I've got my metric number six hex socket with a small extension on my on my ratchet. So we're gonna break these open. These are not terribly tight. I don't think I'm going to completely remove them. I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen when I get them all loose and out. So we're just going to loosen them up. Wow, that one wasn't even tight at all.
Okay, I see what's happening. It's just this little plate on the back, so just gonna be real careful. Take these off. Put the screws in my pocket for now. I've got a little cup on my bench. It's a little plastic Tupperware device or cup that I like to lay around and I'm gonna put little bits and pieces in there so I don't lose anything. Always try to stay organized. Saves you a lot of hassle in the end. Last screw. This plate, this plate is really loose, so just remove that. Okay, that side's done. Time to remove the left side. That inside one was a little bit more tight than the other side. Oh, I can see the hole in the cell starting to move, so the whole assembly's loose, so now you gotta be a little bit careful here. Don't want anything just falling off. Okay, so I'm supporting the nacelle with one hand and I'm gonna loosen these screws with the other because I know as soon as these, these screws come out, they're going to, this, this thing is gonna drop. So, possibly a helper. Might have been a, a good idea. I'm at home alone today, so I don't have that luxury. This is number two. Okay, so now let's see, I got a dilemma. I've got last screw. Uh, got a good hold on the nacelle with my left hand. I'm just gonna be real easy with this as it comes out. So there we go. Just take the whole thing out in one shot. Lay that on the ground. This nacelle should be loose, so let's see if it slides off. Nice and careful. There we go. The next step is to remove and retain two trim ring screws, remove the headlight, the trim ring, and the rubber surround. There's one of the, there's one of these screws on each side of the headlight. Notice that I've got a, a small shorty Phillips screwdriver. Uh, there's not much clearance between this uh, screw and the, and the turn signal indicator. So uh, if you don't have a shorty little screwdriver, Around here on the back side of this turn signal, you can uh, just loosen this. Those, those are just rubber, but uh, you can loosen that bolt and just kind of spin this turn signal around out of your way. That way you can use a little bit longer screwdriver. Uh, just remember to be sure and reposition those correctly and tighten it up before you get going on the, uh, on the road. So as soon as we remove the screws, one on each side of the headlight, uh, we're going to pull the headlight out. And we're, I'm going to go ahead and just remove this rubber, this rubber piece. Oh, and we lose the screwdriver. So that's done. So we'll get those unscrewed and, and, and get the headlight out and we'll be right back. Now with the screws out of either side, this is just loose. So just kind of work it gently out. There's going to be a wire attached, and there is. So we're just going to lay this gently on the on the fender. That's why I have this this cloth on there. And this plug, it just unplugs. There's no special weird, um, you know, you have to press here or lift this or twist that. None of that stuff. It's just a plain plug. So just gently unplug it. There's another wire.
There's a big bolt and nut that run just underneath the headlight housing. You can see I've got a, a wrench on it. That's a 15 millimeter, so I've got a wrench on this side. And over here, I've got a gear wrench. Both 15 millimeters. So that's our next step is to remove that. That basically is gonna um, remove this bucket right here. Now that's a pretty long bolt. Once you get the nut off, you're gonna find it won't slide out all the way because it wants to hit up against this fork. But actually what it's hitting up against is this turn signal. So I did have to loosen that bracket on the back. It's very simple and just slide it up the fork and that gives you just enough room to be able to pull this bolt. Voila! And with that, the headlight housing just comes right off. Now the next thing we have to do is remove this bracket. There's a bracket right here and it attaches by two bolts, nuts, or um, screws, right there. Looks to be number five metric hex. So there's one on each side. Need to remove those, and then this bracket can be removed. Okay, we're back, and with the bracket removed, here's the bracket, what it looks like. Uh, it was in there, and You'll notice when you're looking at all of this stuff on your own bike, it's probably got this, um, this weird fabric uh, material, kind of a loose fitting Velcro uh, wrap that goes around some of the wires that are up here. So uh, it's important to me at least to make sure these are covered now. Uh, it it's really does not do a thorough job. It's, it's some really crude and rudimentary protection for these wires. You've got to remember that there was, uh, you had your nacelle uh, that surrounded the headlight um, on there protecting that area. So uh, that gave its primary protection and this was just secondary. Uh, and likewise, when you put the fairing on, um, it will do the same thing. Now I've seen on other Scouts, I don't know if they make it for the Scout Bobber 20 or not, but there's a, uh, a nice little shield uh, with the Indian logo that, that fits over this area protecting these wires. I don't know if, um, if they've got one of those. I'm not even sure if I want one, maybe at some point in time because actually I intend to leave this bearing in place. Um, it is a quick release and a lot of people uh, will buy it simply for that fact. Um, I did, it was part of the reason that I, that I chose that particular fairing. So it is quick release, so it does live up to its name, but there are some things that you want to also consider. Uh, remember, you've just replaced this whole uh, assembly here uh, you know, with the headlight. Completely different bucket, different headlight, different surround. This rubber piece right here, uh, this was a challenge. This gave me a hiccup because this is one part of the instructions that to me, it was a little bit unclear. So it took me a little bit of deductive reasoning and I got pulled away for a little while You'll notice everything here is basically assembled, so uh, I did not get a chance to uh, did not get a chance to film all of that uh, when I uh, went to you know the final assembly. But it's relatively simple, and we'll go over that really quickly. But anyway, this this piece is attached to that bracket. Um, I removed it from the bracket and reused it here just to wrap these wires, uh, just to tidy it up just a little bit. You may or may not want to do the same. So everything has been installed. Uh, the, there's, a, there's a new bucket um, and then there's a new bulb. Uh, it actually comes with a, uh, a halogen light bulb in the kit. Um, I've got this LED and so I had to replace that and there are good instructions with that. I'm not going to go into that in this video, uh, but to how to replace the, uh, uh, the halogen bulb that comes with the kit. Like if you've got an existing LED, which I did, I added this to the bike before. 
so I wanted to be sure and use my, uh, my new LED headlight. So I had to swap that out with the one that came with the kit. Uh, so anyway, the, the bucket just goes in. Uh, you remember this big, uh, the cinch bolt right there? That's the bolt that uh, basically holds the entire assembly to the bike. Uh, this is also the bolt that you will use to uh, loosen and tighten and adjust your uh, up and down angle of your headlight. Uh, there are instructions online. I don't remember the exact, uh, the exact measurements. Uh, I will put a link to that uh, description and that procedure uh, in the comments below. So, so be on the lookout for that. It is going to be important uh, for you to adjust the headlight because you don't want to uh, just uh, pick up the ground right in front of you and you also don't want to be uh, searching for owls in the trees. So make sure your headlight's adjusted, uh, that way you can actually see at night. Okay, I mentioned that I had a little hiccup and some confusion about this rubber surround. Uh, instructions aren't 100% clear on exactly what to do with that thing. So I had to, you know, do some deductive reasoning and uh, I finally figured it out. Uh, and it's really simple and I'm a little embarrassed about not figuring it out sooner. But uh, anyway, uh, there is a groove between the bucket and this, and this headlight bezel where they go together. When you slip the headlight in, uh, there's a groove around the exterior here. Well, this rubber uh, piece, it just barely fits in between. So you, you basically smash it in between the grooves. And if you recall, there were two screws to remove the old headlight. Uh, there was one on each side that you would remove, and that way you could slide the headlight out. This one does not have that. Uh, basically, it's got this screw right here. And this was another hiccup because uh, although I inventoried all of the parts that came in, I did not inventory the parts that came in this particular box with the headlight assembly. It did not have this screw. Now the instructions will tell you to save these two screws because you'll use them later. When it comes time to do this, it says use that screw that you, one of the screws that you saved. Well, let me tell you something, that screw's only about a quarter of an inch long and this needs to be at least three quarters. So it's not anywhere close to being long enough. So I had to dig through my bolt bucket and it's, it's an old uh, tray that I've got. It's an old uh, cat litter tray that I've just got filled with old nuts and bolts and everything from projects. Uh, over the years uh, so it's just accumulated so you never know when you're going to need something so if you've got a bolt but or if you don't have a bolt bucket you might want to consider one at some point in time they do come in handy although they just kind of sit around for eternity uh, but there's always something you can find in if you need it uh, so anyway so I, I located a screw uh, the proper size and thread put that in there uh, then I adjusted the headlight uh, according to the procedure and uh, so everything was, was really uh, bolted on and adjusted. And so it's, it's pretty good to go. It's time to actually put the fairing on. Looking at the back side of the fairing, earlier in the video, I had mentioned how glad I was that the, uh, the kit came with this bracketry already attached to the inside of the fairing. Uh, after I looked at it closely, uh, some of these nuts were loose. So I wanted to go ahead and I took care of that and uh, there are some torque specifications. So uh, make sure that these are, these are tight, okay? Uh, just make sure you don't have anything that's, that's really loose. Uh, so the other thing to do is whether or not you're going to keep the little small windshield that comes with the fairing or if you're going to uh, replace it with the additional, this was an additional cost, this taller 7 inch uh, windshield, uh, which by the way I like very much. Uh, basically there are some very good instructions on the method to put this bar on here, plate, 
bar or whatever you want to call it. And then be sure and follow the instructions precisely as to the order of the washers and spacers, etc., and the nuts that go on here. And uh, when you torque them down, it doesn't mention it, I don't think. I prefer to kind of space it out uh, and do it evenly, like I'll do a little on the center, a little over here, a little over here, just kind of evenly and space out the torque whenever we're, we're getting those tightened up. Also, you'll have these uh, two little half moon shaped rubber grommets, or yeah, half grommets I, as I call them, uh, one for each side. So those are what protects your handlebars from this metal bracketry. So it makes everything nice and smooth when it goes on. Now this is, at, at this point, you, know, you may want to make a decision whether you want to keep uh, the fairing removable or, you know, quick release and actually do that. The main reason I did not choose to, I, I'm going to lock mine down. This is a, a little bracket that they have and it basically you just attach it right here once it's on the bike and on the handlebars. I'm going to do this. Um, yes, it would be nice to be able to remove this fairing sometimes and, uh, you know, ride around with it, you know, just kind of strip down. But uh, I don't like the way the bike looks with this weird uh, rubber gasket thing that goes around the surround. It just looks weird. And um, so, no, I'm just going to look, and, I, and but more than that, I think I'm going to like the fairing and I'm just gonna leave it on there. Once the windshield's on, then it's a good time to just take another look around, make sure everything's tight. Uh, this will basically just sit down on top of the handlebars and these will rest against your forks. Uh, so the first thing is to just set them in place on your, wind, on your uh, handlebars and then uh, just let these rest loosely because I wanna show you something about that. Here you can see I've I've placed the fairing onto the handlebars. I have not pushed it in to where those lower uh, devices grab the forks. Uh, when I first did this, I looked at this and I was like, this is odd. Look at the position of the headlight and the hole for the headlight in the fairing. I was like, what? This is all off. This is not gonna work. So then I thought about it a little bit. I was like, okay, well, when I clamp this thing down, uh, and push the, these things back, this fairing is gonna lower, and uh, it, I guess, is designed to clear this headlight. I was skeptical, but hey, I've gone this far. I wanted to try it out and see. So, also, I wanna show you quickly about these uh, attachment devices. Uh, just a quick tip on something to look out for, but I need to change the camera. Okay, these are the devices that clamp onto the forks. And the quick release is the fact that these you just stretch around and there's a little, a little stubby on the back side that it'll just hook into. Uh, very simple once it's on, but yeah, so this, uh, just take a look at this while we, uh, while I clamp this down and you'll see what happens. Oh, this is the tip. Uh, whenever you're placing it down onto the handlebars at first, reach around on each side, pull these out of the way because they tend to get caught in behind and they make it just inconvenient. So uh, that way it goes on nice and smooth. So watch this as I push the fairing down onto the boards. It takes some effort. So then, you just kind of stretch this around. You'll feel a little notch back there. There's a hole in the strap, and it just sits on that notch. Now it's on. Do the same on the other side. Back to the front view. As you can see, everything lined up perfectly. I was skeptical, but I was proven wrong. So you've got a little bit of this, this rubber deals 
you know, sticking out. So just kind of, just kind of, you know, poke that back in and then go around to the other side uh, and you can reach down and just kind of straighten things out. It's, it's very simple. Uh, just hopefully it stayed intact around the, uh, you know, the, the seam between the, the headlight bezel and the bucket. Uh, that's, you know, what kind of holds everything in place. As weird as it is, it looks fragile when you're putting it on there, uh, but it seems to hold. And there it is, the fairing on the 2021 Indian Scout Bobber 20. Uh, stock fairing with seven inch windshield. Uh, I gotta be honest with you, I've had this fairing on here for a couple of weeks now, and uh, back whenever I was doing the, uh, the installation, when I ran into that bolt problem, it was about the same time I ran into that rubber gasket problem, I just had to step aside and something was pulling me away anyway, so I didn't get back to it. Well, I finally did, and I just wanted to get the thing on there at the time, and so, uh, so I could ride it, you know, and, and check it out. So uh, anyway, so I've had the thing on there for a couple of weeks. Uh, we'll do a review on how it rides, uh, how it deflects the, the wind. Uh, was it a good investment? Uh, was it worth the time? Uh, was it worth some of the aggravation that I had? Uh, that's part of the fun uh, to me anyway, but everything fits. Uh, it works really well. Uh, so we'll do a review, a little bit more thorough on that coming up. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, more than that, I hope that you might have found it useful. Uh, if so, uh, please feel free to comment if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer any questions. I feel like I'm intimately familiar with this process. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. So uh, hit me up in the comments, uh, shoot me a like, and uh, if you want to subscribe, I'd love that. I've got a couple more doodads that I've uh, got planned uh, and in store for this bike. I've also got some really big news. Uh, nothing is set in stone yet, but uh, there may be a completely new project on the horizon. Uh, not that this one is going away, going away, it would be an additional project. So I'm just going to float that out there, a little tease. Uh, this is Oki Twister 66 signing off from the garage. Thanks for tuning in. Ride safe, two wheels down.